Welcome back. Today we're going to be exploring the engineering design process and how you go from an idea to a finished product in the real world. Carnegie Mellon Robotics Institute is the world's biggest and best robotics research facility. NREC, or the National Robotics and Engineering Center, could develop custom robotic solutions for complex problems. The engineering design process is used all throughout the real world. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, let's define our problem. SensorBot is a mobile robot developed by NREC to inspect industrial facilities using a wide array of sensors. Our goal is to build a functioning recreation of SensorBot using the LEGO Spike Prime Educational Robotics platform and doing so in a simplified manner to allow for obvious constraints. Our next step is going to be to define our criteria and constraints for this project. First off, we want an all-terrain drive base on the LEGO bot to match SensorBot. Next, we need a source of light and a sensor boom to perform complex inspection. We also need tele-operated control capabilities so we can operate the robot remotely. And finally, a host of safety features to make sure the robot is safe to use. Now let's talk about step two of the engineering design process, generating our concept. For us, this step involves picking the various components that we're going to use to accomplish our criteria and constraints. We have the light matrix hub, some all-terrain wheels, different types of rods for our sensor boom, and then finally the sensors themselves. Now for step three, actually developing our solution, both mechanically and with software. A powerful tool in this step of the process is CAD or Computer Aided Design Software, which in this case is LEGO Studio. After we have our final design flushed out, we can begin assembling all the pieces together to match our CAD drawing. We attach big all-terrain wheels at the back to accomplish that step of the criteria. Then we position a light matrix up to act as a lighting source. Up top, we have an ultrasonic sensor that measures distance. And down below, we have our sensor room with a color sensor mounted on the end. After connecting our components to the hub, we're ready to move on to the code. The LEGO Mindstorm software relies on simple block coding to provide a visual introduction to coding. The code blocks are split into various groups that have their own functions, such as moving the robot, interfacing with the sensors, control, and even advanced operations such as creating variables and custom blocks to do complex tasks. Our first block of code simply assigns our moving motors and then plays a cute little animation to turn the robot on. Next up, we program the controller on the screen to actually move the robot in real life. We make forward and back, move the motors forward and back, and even add little turn signals. And now for our safety features. For both the force and the distance sensors, we want to make it so that the robot stops if it comes near or in contact with anything. Besides physically stopping, we can also add code that blinks our robot's lights and plays a custom sound in order to let the user know that there is a blockage in the way. Finally, we have to provide some code for our color sensor. We can code in six different colors so that when the robot reads a specific color, it can write out blue, black, pink, yellow, green, or red on the light matrix with LEDs. For a final check on our code, we can look at the controller in the Mindstorm software and see that we have buttons and a joystick for moving the robot. The fourth step in the design process consists primarily of testing the prototype, where we can see if our final product meets the criteria and change it if it doesn't. The lights on our robot check off the illumination criteria. An all-terrain drive base allows the robot to navigate with ease. We have a functioning sensor boom. Now to test our safety features. And here's a distance sensor safety. And finally, testing our color sensor to see if it actually outputs the correct color.
Okay, it's pretty obvious that our little robot meets all its criteria. Now for the last step. Our solution checks all the boxes and ends up doing exactly what we wanted it to do. Even though it's not everything that Sensabot does, it's an accurate representation of Sensabot when you have to build it on a Lego platform. I hope you guys learned something going through the Sensabot build with me as the same engineering design process is used in the real world. Thanks for checking in with CMRA.